Apple have just released the first major update for Logic Pro for iPad version 1.1. It's a huge update, and in this video, we're going to take a first look at everything that we have. Here is the what's new. We can go through that in just a jiffy. The bottom line here is we've got a brand new hybrid textures pack, and we've got a whole bunch of bug fixes, quality of life improvements, and enhancements. So this isn't a huge update in terms of brand new features, but if you've been struggling with version 1 and you've been waiting for version 1.1 to fix some of those problems, this is going to be for you. To download this, all you need to do is jump into your app store here, search for Logic Pro for iPad, and you'll have an update button right here. I've already updated it, ready to rock and roll. Here's what's new. We've got uh, the, a few little notes here. There's also a complete release notes, which I've linked down in the description. We'll be taking a look at some of those just to brush over them because there are literally hundreds of them. So I'll I'll let you explore those as well in your own time, but we are going to cover some of the major ones in this video here. So once you've downloaded it here in the App Store, just hit the open button and it looks about the same, right? There's not a heap that jumps out at you that is different, but it's what's under the hood. It's all of those improvements and bug fixes that are going to be good. In terms of new stuff, there's a couple of new things here. There's the new mastering, uh, which is we're going to explore in a future video. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we'll be looking at that in a future video. And we've also got a brand new pack in the sound library. This one here, the hybrid textures sample pack. Let's hit this preview button and take a little listen. Sounds pretty cool. So good sort of sound design kind of stuff. We've got 81 Apple Loops and 70 Sample Alchemy patches that we'll be playing around with in that one in the future. So to get to these, you just go into your sound library as we showed there over here, tap on the sound library, tap on hybrid textures and hit the get button. That'll install those and be ready to go. Now, the big thing you need to keep in mind with this is you do need to be updated to iPadOS 17 in order to install this. So if you've taken my advice and and you're working on a major project, you're still on iPad OS 16 or earlier, then you will need to actually wait before you actually update. So please do that if you're in the middle of a major project. But if like me, you've finished off some songs, you're ready to update, you'll need to update to iPad OS 17.1 and then install the update to Logic Pro version 1.1. As I mentioned here, the What's New section here has a few of the new things. So let's dive into some of those. Uh, it delivers, a, you can deliver a release ready mix with the mastering assistant and its professional palette of intuitive sound shaping tools. That should be cool. You can do great mastering in Logic Pro for iPad, but if you're new to mastering, Sounds like this is going to hold your hand, which is cool. We can record live into the quick sampler to create instruments and drum kits, which is cool, using the built-in microphone or any connected device. That's going to be cool. You can interact seamlessly between apps like voice memos and support for split view and stage manager. If you've been importing stuff into your projects, that's a good news thing for you because it can be a bit clunky. You can also drag multiple files now into some of those, which is going to be cool. You can instantly audition samples, loops, and instruments into the browser by sliding your finger up and down which is kind of cool, and uh, that sound pack that we just looked at there as well. So yeah, there's a heap under the hood here, a lot of improvements and a lot of changes that have been made. Let's dive into the release notes now and take a look at some of the highlights. Now this web page will be linked down in the description so you can take a look through at your own pleasure and leisure. But let's just dive into the basics. This first section, the new features, that is what we just saw in the App Store, so nothing super new there. There's a heap of enhancements here that have been added in, so such as swipe gestures and enhancements to the step sequencer, ability to quickly record directly into the quick sampler, which is pretty cool, and a bunch of other things there. If you just want to hit the pause button, you can review some of these in more detail. Stability and reliability, we've got those bug fixes and performance improvements, which is going to be a good thing for a lot of folks. And uh, the increased stability with AUV extensions, that's AUV3. A lot of people have had challenges with plugins, third-party plugins in particular. That'll be a great one to test out. So if you are checking out this new version and you're pl playing with plugins, let us know. Share your experience with the community. Drop a comment down below and hit the thumbs up while you're there because 
Why not? We've got performance improvements there. We've got accessibility. Now, this is pretty cool. I know that there's a lot of folks that use Apple gear and GarageBand and Logic Pro in particular, and the accessibility improvements for folks with vision impairments and other accessibility needs are massive. There is, I think, over 100. It's definitely more than 50. So take a look. There's the first screen. A whole heap of voiceover enhancements and improvements and ability to do more things here that are accessible. Another entire screen worth of them there. Another entire screen worth of them there. This is huge. This is the, the update that we've been waiting for. And if you're thinking at the moment, there's nothing really new here. Welcome to a version 1.1 update. This is the sort of thing that we see. This is all the things, all the data they've collected over the past three or four months of folks putting in bug. This is why it's so important to submit your bug reports because a lot of these things have actually been fixed here. You can now subscribe using a VPN, which is a good thing for many of us that use VPNs. Uh, a lot of changes and improvements to the sampler, quick sampler and sample alchemy, as you can see in there, a heap of changes. The beat breakers had a few tweaks. The mixer, I like this one. You can can now arm multiple tracks with a swipe so adding the ability to use a swipe gesture in there there's a heap of different things in there that you can now do that you couldn't do before or that wouldn't work correctly so hopefully look i know a lot of people will say well where's all the new stuff where's flex time like the full logic pro version it's still not pro software but i think it's on its way i was waiting and many people were waiting for this version 1.1 update so if you were on the fence i think now might be the time to dive in and take a look if you haven't done the free trial yet which you can do you can do that and again if you want to learn all about how to use logic pro make sure you subscribe to the channel check out the videos down in the description and We'll be doing a whole heap more. We'll be diving in in detail in the next few days. So please make sure you're subscribed. Plugins and extensions have had a whole bunch of improvements, bug fixes, changes there. The plugin tiles, the play surfaces, the step sequencer. Again, you can explore this in your own time. The sound library and browser, the drum machine and drum machine, a drummer and drum machine designer, your MIDI round tripping, your live loops. Automation's had some tweaks. The takes folder now actually shows the number of takes that you've done instead of just having to guess, which is cool. Some Apple Pencil improvements, some flex time improvements, the lessons and key commands, the import. So this is gonna be some good things for dragging and dropping files, the multiple file stuff, some cool things going on there. Sharing and exporting's been improved. The undo function is now gonna work for things that it didn't work for in the past. There's some settings and global tracks and additional external hardware support. Editing's had a big buff and a big boost with some fixes in there and a whole heap of general updates there, such as um, the right-clicking and a track now opening a context menu. That's going to be cool for those of us that use mices and trackpads and the like. So that is it. You can see that there, there's previous versions there as well that you can check out the version 1.01, which didn't really have a lot of updates. So hopefully you'll agree this is a whole lot. What's it going to do again? In terms of the brand new stuff, well, we have that new mastering assistant, which I'll be exploring in a future video. That'll be fun to play around with here in the mixer and being able to do some mastering. So I'm going to take my song Choices and do a remaster of that using the mastering assistant. See how well I did the first time around. That'll be a lot of fun to play around with. The new pack there, of course. And something that was hidden under the hood. This is kind of a little bonus thing for you. 32-bit float is now supported. So if you're diving into the settings here, you can now set this to 32-bit previously we only had 24 bit supported so if you have audio gear that actually does support 32 bit you've now got that option i know that's something that a lot of folks were looking for they were saying if i've got gear that supports 32 bit floating point why won't logic pro let me use it now it will so that's a cool little thing under the hood there so just to reiterate and to re recover this in terms of new stuff new mastering assistant new sound library pack there with the hybrid textures that you can play with a button a metric button of bug fixes and improvements and enhancements in here that will hopefully improve the quality of life for me and for Logic Pro users everywhere. That's going to do it for this first look. I hope you're excited. Let me know though, what are your thoughts? What are your feelings? What are your opinions? I'd love to hear those down in the comments. While you're there, hit the thumbs up, check out all the other videos to learn everything you need to know about creating on your iPad using GarageBand, Logic Pro, and a whole bunch of other things. And I'll see you on the next one.